For the 1969 Tasman season, we only had one car, the Milton Alpha, driven by Frank Gardner, in the four races in New Zealand. But back in Australia, we had entered a very full team of three cars for the first event at Lakeside, the Australian Grand Prix. Joining Frank Gardner and Kevin Bartlett in the Alpha engine cars was the Australian one and a half litre champion, Max Stewart, in the Alpha engine Formula 2 Milton car. Frank Gardner had had mixed success in New Zealand and had brought back a total of seven points towards the Tasman Cup. Piers Courage, in his Brabham biplane, had been more successful and was second to Eamon in the point score. Bartlett was driving the car in which he had won his Australian Championship. The two Ferraris of Eamon and Bell were most exciting additions to the local scene. Max Stewart settles down to enjoy his first sponsored drive for us. Graham Hill, current world champion, had not had a brilliant time in New Zealand. Frank and Glenn were keeping their fingers crossed for a trouble-free run. Leo Gagan had raced in three of the four New Zealand events and brought back five points. Gardner was on the third row of the grid with a 53.4. Brint was alongside him with a 53. Chris Amon had pole position with a record-shattering best lap of 52.5 seconds, an average of 103 miles per hour on the twisty and tight lakeside circuit. Gardner looked cosy in his all-enveloping cockpit and Bartle was happy enough to give a, a cheerful thumbs-up sign. Stewart had bought his own mechanics as we just didn't have enough to go round. Eamon was four points ahead of Courage and had already won the New Zealand Grand Prix. And now for the start of the 34th Australian Grand Prix. Away they go. It's Eamon, Courage, Bell, Hill, Gardner, Rint, Gagan, Bartlett, Alan Stewart in the first bunch. First time round, it's Eamon, Hill, Courage, Bell and then Gardner. Gagan, Rint, Bartlett, Allen and Stewart. Second time round, Eamon had increased his lead on Hill and Courage, followed by Bell in the second Ferrari and Gardner holding fifth place. Third time round and the placings remain the same. Eamon had completed the second and third laps in under 53 seconds, an average of nearly 102 miles per hour. Going into BMC on the fifth lap, Courage clipped Hill and went off the track. We had our troubles too. One same thing that happened here, blow on head gasket. We suspected it, we weren't real sure, and uh, unfortunately it was. We went on top of the members' hill to observe the driver's progress. Amon continued to lap the course at an average of over 100 miles an hour. Graham Hill was lying third after Bell slipped into second slot when Courage went off the track. Hill was trying hard but making no impression on the flying Ferraris. By now Gardner was holding fifth spot behind the Ferraris and Loti and driving a steady fast race in the 54s. Max Stewart in our third car was lapping in 56s and having a great dice with the 1600cc brigade. By the time we got back to the pitch we found both Gardner and Rint retired. Gardner with a broken oil line, Rint with a chatty engine. Rint had called it a day as they were short of good engines and couldn't afford a blow-up. 
However, we're right on the spot when the next bit of drama occurred. Chris Amon flashes past in a winning manner. Alan and Stuart hold fifth and sixth places. We went down to the control tower to await the finish of the race. Max Stewart kept up the good work for the Alec Milden racing team. Eamon gets the flag to win the 34th Australian Grand Prix in record time. Hill comes home in fourth spot, having lost third place to Gagan. Bell comes in second place, making it a Ferrari 1-2 for the race. Max Stewart comes in sixth place after a well-driven race. Chris Amon comes in after his slow down lap. Gagan comes in after a great performance to be third outright and first resident Australian driver. Dame Zara Holt came down to watch the race, thoroughly enjoyed herself and then presented the prizes. In winning the race and rewriting the record book, Eamon had also put himself well ahead on points for the Tasman Cup. He now had 35 points to Courage's 22. The next weekend at Warwick Farm was a wet one. The day before, in dry and overcast conditions, there'd been a battle royal between Rint and Amon for grid positions, and they finished up knocking more than five seconds off the lap record held by Brabham and Bartlett jointly. Rint finished up on pole with a fantastic 123.8 seconds, an average of 96.66 miles per hour. Amon was alongside him with a 124.5. It started raining overnight and then poured throughout race day, but that didn't stop the racing or an enthusiastic crowd of 20,000 turning up to see the fun. Graham Hill should have also been on the front row of the grid, but had sportingly agreed to a new two-by-two two grid formation which put him in the second row. Bartlett on fourth row had changed to Firestone Wetties as Gardner had bagged the last remaining set of Goodyear wet weather treads. We thought Gardner wasn't going to make it as at the last moment his ignition complained about the rain. Some quick work by Glen Abbey got him onto the line just in time. Max Stewart joined the spectators as a bearing went in his engine during practice and there was insufficient time to rebuild the engine for the race. Rain or shine, Warwick Farm starts on time. And away they go, if you can see them in the spray. First time round, Rint is in the lead, followed by Hill and Bell. Eamon and Courage had already collided at Polo and were walking back. Second time round, and Rint was well in the lead, followed at a respectable distance by his teammate, Graham Hill. Gardner takes Gagan to move into third place. Next time round, Gardner and Bartlett are third and fourth. Courage's car is brought back to the pits, and spinning off and clipping Eamon, he had unwittingly given him the Tasman Cup on a plate. Rent is now well clear of the field, giving him all the road and uninterrupted vision. Hill is not so well off. Either he is going slower or Bell is going faster. Gardner is driving well in the atrocious conditions. A safe distance behind, Bartlett has already discarded his goggles. Back in the pits we find Hill in trouble. It's water in the electrics. He is still dogged with rotten luck in the series. His mechanics try desperately to dry up the terminals. Gardner and Bartlett continue to circulate smoothly. It's just as miserable in the pits as it is for the drivers out there. Cole Green comes in with trouble in a car we've seen somewhere before. I wonder how he managed to collect that flag. Gardner and Bartlett circulate about 100 yards apart in third and fourth positions.
Rint keeps up with his rapid pace for the wet conditions, whilst Hill comes in again for another squirt with a silicone-based spray. Bell keeps up the good name of Ferrari in second place. Surprisingly, this is his first ever wet run in a Formula One car. Alec keeps his lonely vigil in the pits. His cars are well placed and provided they keep going, they will finish in the money. Neither car is going very fast, but the conditions will not allow any better times. They're not likely to break down under moderate speed conditions, but the electrics could pack up in the wet and the cars could spin off on the skating ring surface of the track. Fortunately, both Gardner and Bartlett excel in wet weather racing, even though they prefer it otherwise. With no opposition in front or behind them, they can concentrate on keeping their cars pointed in the right direction. Jack Brabham ambles up, happy to be a spectator for once. His car for the event is still waiting to be unloaded from the bowels of a ship in the port of Melbourne. Down at the finishing line, we wait for the winner. Rint gets the flag 45 seconds ahead of Bell. Gardner comes in third place. Bartlett is fourth place and first Australian driver. Rint comes in after a masterful display of wet weather driving. His race average of 77.73 miles per hour is nearly 20 miles per hour slower than his record practice lap of the day before. His fastest lap was 1 minute 40.4. Gardner managed a credible 1 minute 41.7. Hill comes in in last place having lost so many laps in the pits, but he saved his day by recording fastest lap of the race, 1 minute 40.3 in the closing stages of the race. The weather returned to normal for the last round of the Tasman series at Sandown Park, Melbourne. With the Tasman Cup in Eamon's bag, the race would be a battle for the minor placings. We found Chris Eamon in the pits and asked him how he was enjoying the series. Congratulations, Chris, on uh, coming out on top in the Tasman series. Thank you, uh, Max. It's been uh, it's been quite a hard series, but a very pleasant one. I bet you feel good now after knocking off the both Grand Prix, particularly. Oh, I really do. That was very satisfying, I must say. It certainly was good to see. I can tell you that, and uh, good to see you come out on top after a little bit of bad luck last year. Well, thank you, Chris. The uh, the loss of aim of um, Graham Hill's wing off his Lotus at uh, Lakeside has sort of sparked off a bit of controversy about the safety of these aeroplanes. What have you got to say about it? Well, I'm not altogether in agreement with them. They definitely help, but when everybody gets them, uh, you start to get back to the same level, and I think they are a potentially dangerous thing. And uh, I don't think they really add to the add to the sport very much. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them stopped. Hmm. One of our major sponsors is Goodyear Tyres, and we appreciate the close cooperation we receive from the Goodyear Racing Division. Glenn and Frank work out the final details for the race. About the only chance a mechanic has for a works drive is in the pit road. We only had two cars entered at Sandown as we didn't have time to rebuild the engine in the 1600 car for Max Stewart. Two world champions share a joke. Rabin's car was finally unloaded and prepared for the race inside of two days before the event. Rind had pole position again with a 1 minute 4.3. Eamon is alongside him with a 1 minute 4.5 seconds. Our drivers are a little further back as the grid formation has been reduced to 2x2 two two in the interest of safety. Rabin has a pretty little Formula 3 chassis with a single cam engine from Repco. The start at Sandown is about half a mile from the pits and if nothing else it keeps our mechanics in good trim for the event. The unusual use of the starting flag had the leaders creeping over the line. But away they go and Rint has the better of the start over Amy. Second time round, Eamon has got ahead of Rint. Hill is back in the pits with a broken throttle linkage. Courage is out with a broken half shaft. Rabin is third, Bell fourth, Gardner fifth.
We race down to Shell Corner to see the fun. Eamon and Rint are having a ding-dong battle. Brabham is third. Graham Hill is back in the race, working his way through the tailenders. Gardner has passed Bell and is now in fourth position behind Brabham. Eamon and Rint continue their terrific scrap and are already beginning to lap the tail enders. Try as hard as he can, but Rint cannot get past Eamon again. Gardner keeps up the good work for the Alec Milgram team. By now, Bartlett has retired with a broken exhaust stub. Eamon and Rint keep the crowd on their toes with their terrific tussle. Hill has worked his way back to sixth position, but he's two laps in arrears and has no hope of catching the leaders now. Braddon in third place and Gardner in fourth are well spaced and give us an opportunity to observe them in action. Neither Brabham or Gardner have quite the power to keep up with the leaders, but are doing well in their respective positions. Back at the finishing line in time to see the leaders through. David Mackay is so confident he stayed there throughout the race. An embarrassed Bradman is that by Eamon, but he managed to avoid the same treatment from his ex teammate Rint, who seems to have dropped back a little. Eamon gets the flag to win the final event in the Tasman series. Gardner came in a credible fourth position. Eamon comes in after his slowdown lap and is delighted with the win, remembering how close he came to Jim Clark the year before at Sandown. Chris Eamon won four of the seven Tasman races and with a couple of thirds finished with 44 points. His rival Rint won two races and had a couple of seconds to make 30 points. Courage did well in New Zealand, including a win, but was conspicuously unsuccessful here and collected 22 points. Graham Hill had a poor time, but managed 21 points. Altogether, an exciting end to an exciting series as Eamon takes care of the Tasman Cup. Perhaps one day, we may see it ourselves.